start talking when I see the message come up. <clears throat> there it is. And I'm just going to um, bring up my R. And um, if you do, if you do download the um, the script, I have. Um, I'll just show a little picture of. I don't know if you guys are using GitHub to access this. I've set it up uh, on that web page so that you don't have to use GitHub, so that you can just click and download as you wish. But um, if you do look in the GitHub, I've got the uh, the um, setup looks like this. And what you'll want to do is make a. If you want to follow along, you want to make a, a folder where you have the scraping.r script. And uh, you'll want to make a folder that's got uh, the data. And uh, you'll also want to make a folder that's empty called PDFs, which is where we'll we'll put our downloaded raw data. And let me say in my own words what I think this problem is, is that um, there's, uh, there is uh, <clears throat> a, a, uh, an initiative for companies, I believe, that, that um, have a have a public um, presence or a public component to their institution to make a statement about their position on modern slavery. I don't know much about this issue, but I I know it's a um, important issue across Europe, across across the world, obviously. And um, the the government has um, created a web space for these companies to publicly make a statement uh, about their position with regards to, to slavery. I know this is an important uh, point because even the archers had a segment on the um, on slavery not long ago over the last couple of years. That's that's really the only background that I myself had had in this. But I'm, what I've done is I've taken the um, the link and I'm just going to go to the link for the portal that Iona shared those weeks ago. So I'm just going to copy this. Again, it's in the um, the script, but I'm just going to drop it also in the chat. And I'm just going to open a new tab and go there. I'm going to accept all the cookies. Give me all the cookies, please. And I'm just going to scroll down. And um, what, uh, what this portal does is it uh, allows you to, to look at the um, data that they've compiled that has the evidence for the companies that have made a statement. I think if we click on this link, so that's let's download the statement data. I'm just going to copy that. And I'll, again, if you're following along at home or wherever you are, put that in the chat. And uh, what we have is these three data files, and they are comma separated values files. As you'll see, I'll demonstrate them in a moment. And I, I've just made a link to the one for 2022 for you in that example data sheet. So you'll only download that one. But of course, you could follow the link and download them all yourself. Some of them are big, um, as you'll see. And uh, we'll take a look at it in a moment. But um, what I, I think there is, is there, there are a number of columns. In fact, if my memory serves me right, it's 71 columns of data. So quite a lot of information in there. And uh, one of them is a URL to the statement. And um, when I started down this, I, I, I'll show you a solution in a moment that captures the, um, the, um, the file if it's a PDF. But the, I just noticed myself that some of them are HTML and some of them are other formats that are rendered in web pages. I haven't tried to solve that problem. But in all, over the three years, there are quite a lot of uh, files. Iona, do you know how many statements there are over your three years of data? There are more than 10,000 companies uh, listed there. And, um, but some companies are kind of, a, they submitted a multiple because they've got multiple um, branch companies and they use the same. OK, well, that's interesting um, that we could probably address that programmatically and, and summarize it as well. I didn't try to do that, but um, 
I counted the rows, uh, as we'll see in a moment, and there are around 25,000 different rows. So if there are only 10,000 companies, yeah, that means that there's quite a lot of redundancy. So um, what I think the problem is, here's my problem statement um, in my own words, is that um, with 25,000 potential URLs to click on, this would take quite a lot of time, a lot of manual labor to click, download the PDFs, um, do something with them. And so um, the, the task we're trying to automate here is to in some way automate the download of those files. I have only taken the burden on today just because it, it does introduce a couple of concepts and we just have so much time to get through. But we could automate downloading any kind of file. I've only automated downloading the PDFs and at that I've, I've, I've only got an example. We, and we could we can poke the example that I've made with a sharp stick and see how resilient it is. But I suspect to get this to download everything seamlessly would take a little bit of fiddling. And we would also want to um, take into account, I'll, I'll show you in a moment, I discovered that um, not all the links are live. So for some of the links that are that were put up in, um, at least in the only ones I really extensively tested were, um, and I didn't even extensively test, the only one I sort of tested were in um, 2020. Some of those links are already dead, um, even in early 2022. That's an issue, and we, we could collect data on that, actually. I mean, I think that would be interesting. I haven't written the code to do that. But in There my, is a report already about <laughs> I bet the... Is. Yeah, about the um, problem with this. Um, so they, they talked about how many companies have got dead links. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is that is what I said a summary and you, what do you think the problem is? Is that pretty much what you think the problem is? Yeah. OK. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is just show you my start talking through the solution. I, and uh, there are I think that this is, I think to solve this problem completely is not trivial. Um, to make it fully automated, I don't think that that will be trivial at all. I'll just make the code a little bit bigger. I think to, to delve into it like we've done it, like I've done here, is quite easy. And I think to, to have a compromise between those two, you could probably solve most of the problems and collect data on the dead links. Um, and probably get more file types than just PDF, but that that is a it's it's verging away from an easy problem. There are some some aspects to that that are challenging that we'd have to solve, which uh, we'd probably want to play with that outside of one of these meetings. Um, I don't know if you want to do that, but for now, what I'm going to show you is uh, is what I've done. So I've set a working directory. <clears throat> the first thing I did was I uh, just went ahead and read in all the data, you can see it pop in up into the global environment. Three, two, one, one, two, three. Okay, so we see that um, they are all a nice thing I notice, notice about this, not always true with government data, is that the um, data is curated in a system, a systematic way that is consistent. See for uh, 2020, there were almost 9,000 entries. We can see 8,943. 14,300 something from last year and uh, so far this year, a smaller number, okay? And um, now I have downloaded those. Uh, <laughs> I thought it would be cute to um, automate the downloading of that data because probably it's the case that that 2022 data will be updated continuously. Um, and we could automate that so you always have the freshest data, but for today I've just manually downloaded it. And now, just just to make it um, convenient, we don't have to do this, <clears throat> but I'm I'm combining the rows into a single data um, folder, and we could also add a year column so that we could index that. I haven't done that here, but I th I think that would be if I were going to do an analysis that describes this and plums it. That'd be one thing I would do, and I might also run through the links and um, test them and see if there is um, a 404 error. I'll show you what that looks like in R in just a moment and collect some data on that. So I, I might do some stuff like that, but I haven't done that for today. Let's just find it with the, the function rbind. 
we could just bring that up if you want, but um, it's row bind, what R bind um, does in it. There's a C bind for column bind where you can join two data sets by a column and this just joins, it concatenates them in the same order that you list some data frame objects by row. And so what we should pop up here is um, a new, um, now these are, these are data frames themselves. So there'll be a new one called DAT that has 71 variables and the 25,000 rows. Three, two, one. That's easy. We could get rid of D1, D2, D3, but um, I, haven't, I haven't done that here. We could just use the RM to remove them, which I would do um, other than just to um, show you the, what's going on here. So I've done, I've set this up with a couple of experiments. And um, I haven't made my second experiment as a header, but I've, on, I've only done two experiments. And I'll show you some of the things I found just playing around. And what I tried to do is to give template code enough so that anybody with a similar problem could um, adapt this code. For, for you, Iona, I, I think if you want to learn R, you could adapt and play with this code. And I'll show you when we get down there that I've, um, I've only done an experiment that downloads the three first three of the 2022 PDFs, but we can do a little experiment together and see how resilient <laughs> my little code is for uh, downloading more. Thank you. Um, so the very first URL, if we if we just look at a little bit of this data, there are 70 something rows, I mean 70 something, 71 columns of data. And I just wanted to open up one of the data frames in Excel just to give you an idea of what that looks like. <clears throat> so this is the default view uh, in R. It's there's some of the um, columns that have um, quite a lot of text, and it's made the cells um, spread out a bit. But the organization names are one that is probably interesting. I, I thought of adapting, it would be easy to do this, adapting the um, file names in some way. I've just numbered them in order of the rows for now, so we can index them to the name if we wanted to. We can show you how to do that in just a moment. But um, I just thought we'd look at this first. And uh, if we go across, <clears throat> I'm looking up here, the statement year, organization name, address, sector type, company number, and so forth. And if we scooch over, um, we've got these, these URLs. And the statement URL is the one that I focused on here, although we could explore others if it's, if it's useful. And if we just bring this one out, one of the first things I noticed is that um, this one is, a, is a, a web format file, not a PDF. And if we just scroll down on these, I think the first one of these um, first um, first few, the first few rows are um, are web pages. So number four is a web page. Uh, this is row <clears throat> five on Excel, so it's the fourth one. It's also a web page. I think the eighth one is the first um, PDF. So we, we already just landed on row nine, which is the eighth one, and that's the first PDF. OK, so I thought we'd just go to one of these. What they look like. And uh, if you're following along and you like to follow along. So this one works just fine. Um, this one's got their statement. Now it's on a dot ASPX and we can download this. We just have to. Um, we might want to do some things to it to make it nicer to handle. If we just download an ASPX file, we have a, the problem that we need to view it in a browser, but it might be possible to um, print it to a PDF file. I haven't tried to do that yet. <clears throat> if we just go back to the, um, the page here and we go down to our first PDF here. Remember, this is from, um, this is from 2020. I'm just going to copy that and put it up there. And we do this one. Um, this is one of the ones that um, has got a got a weird dead link that's not working anymore on a on a um, 
WordPress, this WP dash content tells me it's a WordPress site, which is kind of a amateur. I mean, I have a WordPress site and it's, you know, it's not a professional website really. It's just a service. So this is when I started noticing that there was this problem. So here's what I've done programmatically just to play around. The first thing I've done is I've taken my new um, my new data object called dat and I've plucked out the um, statement URL uh, column and that just is a is a um, is a column that has those URLs with the documents. And if I just look at the first one, we can manipulate it based on the square brackets um, syntax. And we can just see that this is the ASPX page that we visited, the dynamic web page that we visited for the very first one. And uh, if I just bring this across so that we can see more of it, um, I went ahead, I, we have already peeked at what that page looks like. And uh, we could actually download this. Let me just show you what that would look like with with no automation other than downloading the text. Is um, I've taken the URL at that data point. I can put it in a in a test object. Boom. Now in test, if we print what's in test into the console, you can see it's just a character string of the URL. Three, two, one. And uh, there's just a, a default R. Um, function called download.file and uh, in it has a URL argument and a destination file, dest file argument. And uh, remember I have made a, a folder called PDFs. Let's just have a look at it in my working directory. PDFs. Oh, it's got some PDFs in there, but let's let's lose those for now. So this is my um, my whoops, yeah, delete it from everywhere. Let me turn off my Dropbox or that'll just make me crazy before too long. There we go. Turn you off for 30 minutes. Let's just make this so that we can see both of these at the same time. Hope this isn't too discombobulating for you. I'm just going to pull this one over a little further. There we go. So now we can see what's going on and we can just watch the destination folder when I do this. Now here, I have uh, set the destination file of hard coded the name of the output. So I'm outputting it to test.aspx, but in practice, we can't do that. That's just as bad as clicking 25,000 links. So we would need to automate the naming of the files. Um, we could we could do some way to grab the um, the names of the files and maybe we'll look through them in a second. But every company has chosen a different way to name their PDFs and um, that probably is not suitable for our purposes. So I'll show you um, uh, a solution for that when we come to it. So here I've got our test is the URL and I'm just going to execute download file on line 31. Keep your eye up here in the folder, three, two, one. And we get a little bit of a message down here that something is happening. And um, and actually, um, depending on the kind of computer you use, whether it's Windows, most of you will probably be on Windows, or whether it's Mac or Linux, um, the behavior of this function will will change a little bit depending on whether you're on Mac or Windows, or or for any of you who are on Linux, on Linux. And so, uh, what we need to do is we'll need to look in um, the help in just a few minutes to um, to um, be able to control the behavior of that. But for now, the default behavior is that it's downloaded it. It says it's 90 kilobytes, took just a second to download. It tells us a lot of information about it in the download. It's loaded it up here. It tells us that this is a Chrome file. Let's just open it with Chrome. And it gives us the um, HTML um, in, in Chrome. And I believe if we just copy and paste this, copy, paste, and if I just change the, the name of that to HTML, of course, I could do this programmatically. Uh, let's see, yes, let's just open that in Chrome. Then we get, um, you know, some stuff up here that we probably don't want. And then we get the, the modern slavery, slavery statement down below 
in text, but it's all been formatted uh, in HTML. And that format of the file is um, a, a web format that applies some automation on the server before it renders to you, or maybe even in the browser. You know. OK, so let's get rid of that. Now, we could, um, if I just get rid of those for a second, just to show you what you could do here, we could just save this and, and say, yeah, I know that ASPX will render to HTML. And we could have just told the file to um, have the suffix of HTML. So let's just do that and satisfy ourselves that that works. And we get the same file. Now, this, I just downloaded this file afresh. It just looks the same as the other one. So I'll close that, close all of these down. So um, this is this is a challenge. You know, this is just a little technical problem that we'd have to contend with for non PDF. So I, went, I took this digression um, just to demonstrate that because it was the very first <laughs> file in the whole thing. So uh, now I just want to get the first URL that actually has a PDF in it. And um, if you look at um, the the data column here. Maybe what I could do is just um, copy that and down in the console. Oh, I, I can do it up here in the in the script. And using this um, the square bracket syntax, maybe I'll just um, display the first eight or so of the uh, URLs there. Three, two, one. There we go. Let's just have a look at what they look like. So for the, the first eight, um, in this um, in this this whole document, only the um, the eighth one is a PDF, and all the others are are just web pages. So uh, we can exploit the idea that uh, we can access the indices of this uh, in the following way. Now there's a tool in um, Linux. I know a few of you will have used this before, and some of you I also. I'm pretty sure we'll never have heard of grep. <clears throat> grep is um, a, uh, a tool that's used um, in programming to manipulate character strings, especially to search for character strings. But you can do things with the grep family of tools like search and replace or um, search for very specific things and um, change uh, certain certain strings or certain alphanumeric strings with different ones and so forth. But here, what we're doing and the way that it works is we're using the grep function to search for a particular string. In this case, we want to find dot PDFs. And we want to find dot PDFs in the um, in the um, these URLs. So uh, if, if I just take the inner part, if you ever see a big old long nested piece of R code, um, the way to really learn what is happening is to just take little pieces of it and run them one at a time so to build up an understanding of what they're doing. So the first thing I want to show you is what is returned by grep when we search for um, dot PDF in that whole that whole long list of um, of URLs. Let's just do that first. Look down in the console. Now there's going to be a, a lot of numbers. Three, two, one. What I'd recommend you to do is to, um, whenever you come across a new function, you should always read the help page. And what you'll find is a lot of information there about all the family of grep tools. But um, what's being returned here are the um, the row numbers for the rows in this vector of URLs where .pdf terms up. Now, I'm, I'm taking a bit of a gambit that there aren't some random PDFs, dot PDF strings strewn about there. And there probably aren't. But um, this is kind of nice because now if we know that this, the grep um, function returns a vector of, um, of rows <laughs> in the greater vector where we can, um, where we can um, find PDF files, what we can do is uh, we can access the index of that vector. And if we just scroll up to the top, the very first index 
is row eight. And so if we access the first position of this grep vector, we're going to get row eight. So this should return eight to us. Uh, or maybe I'll just demonstrate that um, we can do three, which will return 18. So let's just demonstrate that that is the way that I say it is. Three, two, one. So it returns 18. It's the third value of the vector of um, statement URLs that uh, are row numbers containing .pdf. So then what I can do now that I have a, the row number where there's a PDF, and I'm just going to go back to one for um, demonstration purposes, <clears throat> is that I've wrapped that entire um, statement that's going to return the first PDF row number to us. I've wrapped that all in the square brackets again for the uh, the statement URL column. So what this is going to do is it's going to grab the URL that's at position eight for the data. So it's the first PDF, and I'm going to put that in test. So uh, if we just return this whole thing, three, two, one, we get our first PDF, and, uh, and I just store that in the variable called test. Three, two, one. Boom. So now what I can do is uh, we'll just look up here. I'm just going to delete our little test HTML again. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to execute this download URL. I'm going to set the URL to the new test that's got our first PDF. And I'm just going to call this one test PDF. So um, let's try that. Three, two, one. We get a little bit of information up here, and we actually don't get a um, file here. If we look in our verbose message here, there's a complaint. There's an error in the download. Can't open this URL. Warning message. Basically, the um, there's a status message for HTTP. Means that the web page is down. 404 not found. Now we may want to automate something to catalog every time we get that as well. So uh, we could try a few of these. Let's just try a few and, and get the first one we can. Let's try the second one. Three, two, one. And so the second one does work and we can just have a peek at it real quick. Um, so now that um, now that I did try to open it, even though um, this one did open, uh, I get an error. Let me just drag this over here to you. This is what happens when I try to open this one. Close it. Boop. So that one is is also janky. It doesn't work. <laughs> so we can uh, kind of explore that, uh, and I'll just do this for the sake of uh, trying to figure out what is happening here, and to demonstrate to you um, the different kinds of errors that you might get. So if I just print out the um, one to that one, copy it, and we'll go to it on the web. Boom. So this one, um, when it goes to the website, there formerly would have been a PDF up on this website, and it redirects to the main page because that PDF has disappeared from the main page. So um, this is this is why I mentioned that this was an issue. All right, so um, <clears throat> what I wanted to do was to have a successful PDF download. So I just um, decided that I was going to work on the newest data set, um, making the gambit that that um, that would work. And um, so if I look at the D3, this is just for 2022. Remember, there are only 270 something ones there. Let's just have a peek at, at um, what have I done? Um, let's just have a peek at the, um, the URLs there. They look exactly the same. There are 282 of them. 
can have a look at the um, grep statement for all of them and let's see what we get. So um, out of the 200 and something that we, we get, we get about 130 out of the, the total that have PDFs. And then if we just grab the first one, we can have a peek up here. I'm, I haven't named it anything um, special at all, but um, I'm just going to grab it and put it into test. Just the first one. So that is actually number one. And um, here, what I've, I've done is I've, uh, I have resorted to um, some of the some of the um, arguments and on Windows to do a successful PDF download. Um, you know, this is a good setting and uh, Windows binary is a good setting. So let's just try it. Three, two, one. And this one was a little bit bigger of a PDF and let's just have it. So this will be our first successful PDF download automated. And we do get one from Abacus Medicine. Now we've only we've only named this test so far. Um, which um, is a problem unto itself. And so um, we will do a second experiment where we download several PDFs. And uh, this is a place where we can um, we can um, poke the system with a sharp stick a little bit. Is uh, I didn't really want to download 25,000 files to my computer. Um, e even if it's only half of them and some of them are done, I think we need to do a little more programmatic experimentation before we did that. So uh, what I've done here is just a little experiment where I said, well, how many do we want to do? Let's let's download five. And I set up a for loop. We have talked about for loops a bit. It's one of those basic staples in the old programming toolbox. So what this is going to do is uh, we're going to set a va variable and we, just, we could call it anything. We could call it Bob. We could call it I. We could call it X. So traditionally we would call it I. And we're going to go from one up to our N. Um, so this is going to set I to one and then click through every time it um, goes through all of the code between these curly braces. Uh, it'll um, go through all of the code once and then it'll click our random variable I up to the next integer. So it'll start at one. I will be equal to one. Then it will go to two. I will be equal to two. And so forth. And we exploit that here and we also exploit it here. So uh, what I've done is, uh, and I can make this a bit easier to read. I'm putting some spaces in. So I've got my familiar test statement where I've got a placeholder for the, the URL character string that we're going to grab. I've used my grep to get the vector of row numbers that are the row numbers of interest with the PDFs. And I've put our random for loop variable um, in the in the square bracket syntax that I showed up above to do this one at a time. So it'll get the um, the row number at one, at two, at three, and so forth, and it'll cycle them and dump them into test. Then we'll take that URL, call download.file, and uh, here I've uh, for the destination file name. I've, uh, I've pasted it into my PDFs folder. Now paste is a neat little function. I use it a lot in um, creating fancy, well, mo modestly fancy, let's say, um, graph titles. If you need Greek letters or if you need um, complex statements or wraparound lines, you can um, put a string of statements in the paste function and it will combine them into one character string but it will do so programmatically so that we can have a, we can combine strings with a random variable. So uh, this is going to put something called um, our one, then two, then three, up to five dot PDF so that we can keep track of, of this. And we probably would also want to keep a variable that we put with the data object so that we could reference back to it easily or make a table of um, which PDF was which or, e or even make them the name of the company or the first five characters of the company. All of that is just detail stuff that we could just do very easily. But for now, I've just kept it simple. 
and I've set my method and my mode. Okay, and then I've done another thing here is that um, I did a little bit of reading and I did a little bit of poking around in um, this list of, um, of PDFs and I noticed that some of the PDFs were very plain and were small in size and some were um, flamboyant with um, complex logos and things like that and they were bigger in size. We'll see an example of that in a moment. And I just noticed a little bit of instruction in the plain R help page for download.file that if the download takes more than, um, I, think, I think it gives you um, three seconds or something like that. If it takes more than that, um, we have to do a little something to, uh, to make sure that it um, will, will not keep asking the web page for the PDF and time out. So I haven't gone crazy with this. This would be something we'd have to develop depending on the task. But I've just used the sys.sleep. It's a capital S on that. And this is a way to make R pause the execution of um, a command that you're giving. So for every one step in the for loop, we're grabbing the URL. Then we're downloading our file and we're writing it to, um, to a PDF file. And then we're um, putting the system to sleep for one second. And we might have to increase that. So uh, let's go ahead and totally go crazy. And let's do 10. And let's just see how this goes. And you can watch the um, down in the console, the messages that will go by once per second and the um, files that will accumulate. So we should end up, if, if this work, I haven't actually tested it with 10 files yet, should take a, a little bit more than 10 seconds to run. We'll click through each one and we should get files one dot PDF up to 10 dot PDF. Three, two, one. So that was a little bit of a bigger one. Yep, 624, 624, 155, 155. Okay. It looks like um, there's some replication happening here. Some of these. I'm not sure why that is, but it may be that, um, as Iona was saying, that that's the actual data and the same company has uploaded several ones. So let's just have a look at a few of these. So the first one is a Bacchus medicine, like we saw. Second one. It's two sisters food group. This is a bit of a longer one, so bigger file size. Third one is uh, looks like a um, fair trade. Um, um, what's the name of that company again? Delicious coffee, Starbucks. Okay, I mean um, that's the end of my script. Actually, it's just that simple. <laughs> uh, thing I do want to do is I want to look at. Um, let's have a look at. There are not that many greps here. Just one more thing, and then we can kind of do some more experiments if people want to. Or Iona, you can copy and tell us your wish list of what you would like. But I thought we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it looks like if I read that going past that um, these were all approximately the same, maybe even that one as well. So let's have a look at rows 13, 14, 15. Just initially, I'm just going to go back to the data. I'm just going to open up the um, newest data set. And there we go. And 13, 14, 15 here will be 14, 15, 16. I'm just going to make these. Um, it's really annoying the liberties that Excel takes with its own spreadsheets. This is a CSV file, actually. So um, indeed, 14 is this uh, Agilisis. 15 is Agilisis. 16 is Agilisis. All of these are Agilisis. So um, those are all correct that one company has loads of entries on the same exact PDF. So um, it was working as intended. Comments or questions on this? That's all I've got for today. There are lots of things we could do to change the file names and all sorts of stuff like that. But um, is this what you had in mind, Iona? 
Yes, yes, indeed. That's that's brilliant. Really, really great. So we're talking about like uh, you were you were saying twenty five thousand euros. How long do you think it would take <laughs> for twenty five thousand euros? Uh, yeah, well, twenty five thousand divided by uh, sixty seconds divided by sixty minutes. It would take about 6.9 hours. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> oh, it so take, I mean, the, the, I think it would take less time than that because um, I think what I'd probably do if I were going to really give this a go is I would I would add a few things to my. Um, yeah, much longer to read. I'm not I, actually. That's a good comment, Matthew. It it um. I was wondering what is actually being solved here. Clicking is solved, but the much longer task of um, getting what you want out of those those files so is not. The <laughs> reading part was um, I I there were two. One is uh, you know the a while ago uh, Joe looked at uh, how you could uh, analyze the text in R and and then uh, what's the other one? Uh, Pi. It was a Python, yeah. yeah. So you could um, use the uh, Python to analyze the text. So I wonder whether that is possible. And then the other possibility is um, I used um, SPSS Modeler, uh, Modeler Premium uh, a while ago, where they could um, do natural language processing as well. So like 4,000, um, I, I analyzed more than 4,000 personal statements and that took about 10 minutes to generate lots of lots of categories. How did, um, how did it, does it automate the task of um, pulling out the corpus that you're analyzing and all, and also did you, do you know if it, um, if you provided it with the the categories that you wanted, or did you do that in an unsupervised way? Did it just tell you what likely categories were that were showing up? Uh, there are two ways. One is um, you could do it initially, just um, um, do a kind of training. You could so you 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 let it run all the categories. Once you've got the sum, you can then train it. You can recategorize and regroup. So by by doing that recategorization, it's basically it's about training the categorization. So you don't have to do like if I had four thousand, I'd probably train uh, with um, some, um, say one hundred or two hundred, and um, and then you you use the new categories to run it again. So you could rerun again and again and based on your new categories, basically. I think that um, if you were going to really get into this and use this kind of tool, NLP that is, for this kind of data, I think it would be worth developing a script either in Python or R. You could do exactly what you've just described in either language. So you pick one you want to learn and invest in, and you could do mm -hmm. it. For me, I would have to, I'm not an expert in using that. I, I have taught them and I can get on top of it, but even for me, um, unless I was going to do this several times and really invest in it for a, for a real research question like that, I think you'd probably be better off using an automated tool, um, mm. maybe with SPSS, but there, there are some automated tools um, that you could access through R and Python as well. Yeah, um, obviously SPSS um, modeler is very expensive. And we have to, if we use it, we have to subscribe for three years each time. <laughs> so that's why we can't use it anymore. And so if we are able to use Python or R, then that would be brilliant. I see. Um, yeah. Well, it's very possible. It's non-trivial to do it, though. It's non-trivial to do it. It would take some investment from probably more than one person to do that. Mm. Mm. So we could we could talk about that out of here. Yeah. That's definitely possible. The file handling and getting the um, text out of the files, you can also do that either in R or Python. That's that's easier to do, but it's also non-trivial. 
because when you're doing with PDFs, the formats for the different PDFs, um, there are slight variations in them, but it, it's possible to do that. It's that that is um, mm -hmm. that's e more easily done than than actually doing the analysis from scratch. Yeah, no, that's brilliant, and that this is really the the part that you just showed us. And that was the main part, which would have saved lots of time, isn't it? You know, otherwise you have to do it. Would save some time, yeah. Would save some time. Yeah, it would save some time. If it takes so six point nine hours to do one per second, it would take a lot longer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it would take a month. <laughs> I think um, it would probably be nice uh, if you said there's recently a report for um, for uh, how many dead links there are. Maybe it would be a thing that you or you and your student or whoever is doing this to come over and we do this outside of Herrig and but it would be something good to bring back. Um, we'd have to sit and figure out what needed to be done. Uh, mm -hmm. I can think of a bunch of things that can be done, but there are a lot less things than I could think of that should be done <laughs> to solve the problem. So that's something we would yeah. have to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any other thing. comments yeah. from uh, from you, Iona, or from others? From me, I, I just think this is a fantastic and really thank you very much. That's exactly what I, what I was expecting that you know the R would do, and so you just showed us exactly that, and uh, that's really I'm really grateful that you spent time and developing the script as well. But, but I I need to I need to practice. <laughs> <laughs> this was inspired by um, by after you mentioned this, Matt. Um, just popped the link up. He found a tutorial that had a just a little demo of the download file. I may have put this. I did. Um, I think this is the link that Matt shared, which I just put in there. But probably Iona, um, if you if you want to do this, download the script, try to give it a go. You can play with the numbers yourself and see what it does, and play with the other parts of it, and and then just come over one day and we'll do it over a coffee or something. Yeah. That would be brilliant. Yeah, I downloaded. I've opened the um, the script, but of you know the, the main thing is I haven't created the subfolders for the date yeah. and download. So therefore, I um, I will I will try that afterwards. I think um, if you have trouble doing this, I've set the working directory in the folder that I've done. Mm. But there, the way that I've taken to when I work with other people, especially if they're um, they don't use R a lot. So I've taken to using, I mean, maybe we should do an R, a Herrig meeting on this, is um, I've personally taken to working from projects. So I create a, a new file that is a special kind of file called an R project. When you open the R project file, it automatically sets your working directory to the directory where the R project file lives. And I've mm -hmm. just found when I've worked with people recently that it's a lot easier for some people to do that than go to the step of, setting up their folders and directory structure. So maybe we can we can do that when we're together. Any, any other comments? This was kind of a simple blast here today, but I thought this was what you wanted to do, so I'm happy to hear it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. As I said, it's exactly what I <laughs> was yeah. hoping. Yeah. So Excellent. maybe the last thing that we could do is uh, let's totally go crazy and let's try to do 100. This is going to be mind blowing for all of us. and. Um, I'll just fade out. We can hear like the guitar music playing as we fade out here. Three, two, one. Oops, permission denied. Oh, look at that. It's like um, we have some overriding permissions on my thing. So let's clear this out. Boop. Yep. It's, oh, I think it's because I, it's because I have it open. There we go. Sure is, Matt. All right. Boom. Oh, look at that. It's it's going. Nothing can stop it. I'll see you guys in seven hours. What a successful meeting. <laughs> this is only the first 100. <laughs> I'm going to stop. The, I'll, I'm going to see how this goes myself. Um, and then um, I'm going to stop the video. And that's all I've got. So um, you guys have a good night, and I'll talk to you next week. <laughs>